Okay, so just want to share with you a little book review that I've done, a book I've just finished reading here in Sunny Sharm El Sheikh. So this is a book called The Top Five Regrets of the Dying. Uh, Top Five Regrets of the Dying by a lady called Bronnie Ware, um, who's an Australian lady and is um, described as a life transformed by the dearly departing. So I'll just read the blurb. Um, after too many years of unfulfilling work, Bronnie Ware began searching for a job with meaning. Despite having no formal qualifications or experience, she found herself working in palliative care. So palliative care is the end of life care. During the time she spent tending to the needs of those who were dying, Bronnie's life was transformed. Later, she wrote a blog post about the most common regrets that the people she'd cared for and expressed to her. So she, this lady wrote a, bl uh, a blog post, basically an email, and she called it the top five regrets of the dying. That went out to about 8 million people. 8 million people read it all over the, all over the world. So she basically took that um, email and expanded it into a book. Um, and a little bit about Bronnie Ware herself. She's an author, speaker and songwriter based in northern New South Wales, Australia. Her favourite role is as a mother. She's a mother, favourite teacher is nature. Bronnie is also a teacher of courage and a great advocate for leaving space to breathe. Um, okay, so the top five regrets of the dying. So straight off, I've got to say that this is a beautiful book. Um, really enjoyed reading this. I used to take it with me on on the subway and read it in little bits. So it took me a bit longer to read than I would normally have done, but you know, it's not that big a book. Um, as I say, I, I did see the original email and it was one of those things about the top five regrets of the dying. One of those things that you read, you know, having a cup of coffee or whatever, and people want to read. And even that was interesting. So I thought I knew what this book was going to be about. Um, so I was pleasantly surprised that it's not like the email, really. Um, although she's used the, the, the sort of five headings and expanded upon them, she's also talked about her own life journey in this and, and how her own life journey uh, kind of transformed. Um, very, really interesting, really interesting to read. If you're somebody who's busy working a job, living in the kind of rat race, it's quite good to read a book about somebody who isn't bound by any of those things, who's literally sleeping in their car and other times, you know, does, um, you know, she doesn't know where she's going to end up. Uh, and that kind of life suited her up to a point when she didn't. The, her, her, um, having lived with somebody who's been through end of life care a couple of times, um, it, what she says really does make a lot of sense. And she, I have to say that it's beautifully written. Um, you never feel that this book is pretentious. You never feel that she's just trying to fulfill, uh, you know, some editor's idea of what you should write in a book. You know, five things to do in, you know, Las Vegas or something like that. It, it's like, you know, she, she, she talks about our own life experience and you can see the way that she changes, how people at the end of life change and how they break down their constructed identities to reveal who they themselves are. And she kind of does that herself as well. And she's not afraid to be vulnerable and talk about some of the issues that she has. She goes through a depression at one point as well. So it's not all happy, happy. Um, I, I would say this this book really was good. I'll, I'll, I'll just talk about some of the, like the five regrets were things like, um, I wish I had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life that others expected of me. I wish I hadn't worked so hard. I wish I'd had the courage to express my feelings. I wish I'd stayed in touch with my friends. That's an interesting one. I wish I'd let myself be happier. And you know, people know about these things, but the book is much, much more than that. And like I said, it's actually very well written. So it does go into things in a bit more depth and it is like a story that unfolds. Um, so it's good. I, I thought I'd just read the last chapter, a couple of bits in the last chapter that I thought were quite interesting. Um, um, there was a, I mean, there was a great story in this about how one of the people that are dying wishes she'd kept in touch with her friends. And so Bronnie goes out of her way to get in touch with some of the friends that she knew. And she talks about how she saw these two women go from old ladies to suddenly being young, young people again. And she could see who they would have been because that's how they knew each other. And that's how they related to each other. 
And that, that was a, a bit that I, I remember in the book. And the lady actually died not long after that. But there's a bit at the end, she goes, in the end what matters to people is how much happiness they have brought to those they love and how much time they spent doing things they themselves loved. Trying to ensure that those they left behind don't end up with the same regrets also became critical for many people. None of the life reviews I witnessed from their deathbeds were spent on thoughts of wishing they had bought or owned more, not even one. Instead, what most occupies the thoughts of dying people are how they lived their lives, what they did, and if they had made a positive difference to those they left behind, whether that was family, community, or whomever. The things you often think you need are sometimes the things that keep you trapped in an unfulfilled life. Simplicity is the key to changing this, that and letting go of the need for validation through ownership or through others' expectations of you. Taking risks also requires courage, but you cannot control everything. Say, staying in a seemingly secure environment does not guarantee that life's lessons will pass you by unnoticed. They can still come out of the blue when you least expect them. So can life's rewards, though, for those with courage to honour their hearts. The clock ticks for every one of us. It is your own choice how you spend your remaining days. Anyway, um, and yeah, it's, what can I say, the top five regrets of the dying uh, by Bronnie Weir. Thoroughly, thoroughly recommend this. I would say this is actually a beautiful book. Uh, I would definitely recommend it. Um, if you excuse me, I think my butler is going to just hand me something. Sorry. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. That's my uh, Coke on the rocks. So uh, I really enjoyed reading this in my um, in my holiday. Uh, thank you. That will be all.